This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We are getting into crunch time of the NHL season. The futures market is heating up. There are some pretty tight races in a couple of divisions. Stanley Cup odds pretty evenly distributed as well. And of course, it's still a pretty competitive race for the Hart Trophy. So we're going to break down some NHL futures today by talking to Tom Vecchio and then breaking down his leans on tonight's games over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research, joined here as mentioned by Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Find his work at FanDuel Research. Check out the Daily ISO once it's back, post All-Star break as well. Tom, happy Tuesday to you. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Yeah, big weekend of hockey. We saw a couple outdoor games, which were great. Uh, we are uh, quickly approaching the trade deadline, trade deadline in just a couple of weeks. Uh, it is, like you said, crunch time for the NHL. I think we are in for a very exciting end to the season. How does the NHL trade deadline compare to the NBA? Because the NBA can get pretty hectic. Is the NHL pretty similar in that regard or no? Uh, there's going to be like a lot of depth pieces that are traded, and they're probably going to be overpaid for, as we see most years, where it's like, why? Why is this player, this third liner, being traded for a right. first-round pick? That doesn't make sense, but a team is going all in. Then they resign them for too much money. Like it, it usual nonsense is going to happen. There's sure. probably going to be no big names move though. Okay, so that's good to know. A couple weeks down the line before the NHL trade deadline, hopefully not going to impact things too much from a betting perspective. We're going to break down the futures market with Tom and, as mentioned, talk through some games for tonight as well. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. We've got shows every weekday right here on the Covering the Spread podcast, including four shows this week with no show on Monday. Tomorrow, we're talking NBA futures coming out of the All-Star break with Ryan Williams getting his read on those. A lot of good stuff here to come on the show throughout this week and other weeks so search for covering the spread wherever you get your podcast if you like what you hear leave us a five-star rating on apple Podcasts or spotify and check us out on the fanduel youtube page and on fanduel tv plus tom let's begin things here by talking about the futures market because right now in the stanley cup odds there are 11 teams with odds at 11 to, or 14 to 1 or shorter nobody is shorter than a plus 850 so a lot of teams bunch together. Is this just due to the, the high variance nature of the Stanley Cup playoffs? Or is there something else keeping everyone bunched together at this point? Well, you know, pre-deadline, teams have one view or uh, you know, the markets are, are have one view of teams. And then if they make some acquisition or sure up some of the question marks that they have, that will obviously change things. Like my perspective, looking at it from like a very plain view, is that I can make a case against all of these teams. Right, we can make a case for these teams. Obviously, that's why they're here. But we also can make a case for against all of them. You know, for example, the Avalanche, their goaltending and defense has not been good this year. They can outscore anyone, but their defense and specifically their goaltending with Alexander Georgiev, which they're trying to improve at goaltending at the deadline, potentially Mark Andre Fleury, has not been good. You know, we look at someone like Boston, where they got off to a super hot star, and then their depth pieces are just not scoring. So if Poshnok and Marshawn aren't scoring, well, then they aren't winning. And when we get to the Winnipeg Jets, their goalie, Connor Hellybuck, is probably going to win the Vesna, which is goalie of the year. And they're one of, if not the best defensive team in the entire league. Their offense is horrible. So like we can go through every single team and find great positives, but also some really glaring negatives. So if we combine that with just, hey, it's hockey, weird things can happen in the playoffs. I think that's why we're in a spot where it's like, there's no actual clear favorite this year compared to where we were last year. So at this point, there's really no set in stone team. Uh, the team that I talked about at times in the earlier in the portion of the season and before the year started, which is the Dallas Stars. And they are seemingly putting things together. Finally, their goalie, Jake Ottinger, is back. He's healthy. When he was out, they were winning games, but it was super sloppy. So it's like they're keeping pace and points, but they don't look good. And now he's back. They're like kind of finally rounding into form. So I, I really do like the stars because they, they basically check every box that you want. It's just they have to put it all together for a large sample size now. The stars 10 to 1 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Do you think that's a pretty fair number? And that is that your favorite bet on the board right now? Uh, it probably is. I think it's a, a super fair number because they're in the same division as the Avs and the Jets. So okay. when we're looking at three teams that are all within this top portion of, of 14 to 1, 
or, or shorter, they're going to have to fight through two of them yeah. to just to get to the con- or you know, two of them to get to the conference final. So it's not going to be an easy path, but that number is accurate. So let's talk about that central division race. It's pretty close uh, right now. And especially after last night's games, things even a bit closer right now, the stars are plus plus one twenty to win the central. The jets are plus plus one sixty. avalanche are plus plus two eighty. It's a tough division. Obviously um, the stars in the best position as of right now, any read for you on this division, as far as who wins it. I, I think the stars end up winning, and I think this it'll finish how it is now. Stars, abs, jets. Uh, there's no value anywhere. The only value you would get is if the abs drop a game or two and you can get them at five or six to one. Mm-hmm. That's the only spot that I would jump in. But as of now, it's super tight. Like I said, the jets have a couple games in hand, and they're a few points behind. So you'd like to say, okay, they have the defense to get it done. But when push comes to shove, like they are not scoring at a high rate in order to keep up with the abs or keep up with stars who have great offenses. So it's kind of just a, a wait and see. And I think the best spot is, I don't know if, if you can shop around, but sometimes you can get exact finishing orders. Hmm. So some books offer yeah. uh, uh, what are the straight outcomes or whatever the, the terminology they use. That I think is could be very, very interesting as the season comes to a close, if you can find those markets. But from a straight uh, prediction, there, I, I think it's just there's no value left. Okay, so Tom thinks the Stars get it done, but not enough value there to bet them at plus 120 at Sands. But keep an eye on the Avalanche in case they do lengthen uh, in the coming weeks. Let's talk about one awards market as well, uh, focusing on the Hart Trophy right here, um, <clears throat> the MVP award for the NHL. Nathan McKinnon right now is plus 160, but there are a lot of guys in contention. Nikita Kucherov is plus 270, Connor McDavid plus 340, Austin Matthews plus 440. So a competitive race, and if McKinnon is the clear favorite right now, any value for you in this market, Tom? Uh, that is with Austin Matthews. And I have spoken highly about Nathan McKinnon when he was 10 to 1 to win this award back when we did a pod, uh, I think in mid December. Yeah. I'm personally very high on Nathan McKinnon. Uh, I have a position on him. However, Matthews, after this goal outburst he's had over the past few games, is now on pace to score 74 goals which hasn't been done. No one has hit 70 goals since 1991. Now, the issue is, and if if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see the Rocket Richard where Matthews is, I think, minus 850 to win the Rocket Richard, Richard, which is lead the league in goals. He's going to win that. He has a 10-goal lead. So he's on pace to score 74 goals. No one has had more than 65 since Ovechkin in, I think it was the 2007-2008 season. He, He can hit 70 goals realistically. The problem is he's not going to have as many points sure. as we see with uh, McKinnon, McDavid, or Kucherov. All these players are going to finish, I'm going to say, within five to eight points of each other, 125, 130, whatever it is. So the question becomes is what do we, or I should say the, the voters, determine to be like MVP worthy? Is it putting up 120 points, which players have done over the past few years, or is it doing something that no one has done in 30 years? That's what it comes down to. We're splitting hairs here because – Matthews is not going to have 130 points. He's just not going to. But 74 goals, which he's on pace for, is unbelievable. So I think there's a bit of value with Matthews to win the heart. I think it is diminishing every day. You can't take it less than four to one. Maybe three and a half to one. But at a certain point, if he's neck neck with McDavid, I'm going to side with McDavid 10 times out of 10 just because of what he does. So you have this McKinnon position already in yes. hand. Are you considering Matthews as a hedge against that position at plus 440, or do you want to just kind of let your your good hand ride right now? I really want to take Matthews if he drops the five to one, yeah. but I don't think that's going to happen. So I just, I, I like missed the boat on it essentially. Okay. Where, you know, he had hat tricks in back to back games on Thursday and Saturday. Right. And if you jumped in on Friday afternoon before you had this other hat trick, maybe got him at five and a half to one, but. I, I maybe you could shop around and find a better number. He's four and a half, maybe find him five somewhere else. But I, I'm sticking with McKinnon at 10 to one. It's going to be super tight to end the season. And, you know, maybe this is a spot where I just bet Matthews to have sure. like to goals on a nightly basis just to try and hedge right. out, of, out of a position or whatever it might be. Right. Uh, and maybe you get both. You never right. know. You could because it seems like the goals are pretty good bet with him regardless. OK, so Tom is eyeing Austin Matthews plus 440 to win the hard trophy right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. 
Let's shift focus now, Tom, and talk about some games across tonight's seven-game slate in the NHL. Let's begin things with some money lines and totals. Where are you seeing value right now there at FanDuel Sportsbook? Uh, two traditional markets, starting off with the Penguins Islanders under, under five and a half. I believe it's still a plus 100. The, they are fighting for the exact same thing, which is the second wild card spot as of now. The Penguins are surprisingly extremely strong on defense this year. They are horrible on offense where you see a team that's in the top five of the league for the fewest goals allowed. Why are they so far behind in, in the standings? Well, it's, their offense just isn't there. The Isles are coming off this loss, uh, you know, I want to say kind of devastating loss the other day in the outdoor game against the Rangers where they're up four to one. They end up losing six to five in overtime. Despite all that, their defense has improved since Patrick Watt took over as head coach. They are trending in the right direction. One game is one game. It is what it is. But they're actually improving. And it may not seem that way, but they actually are. So considering the, the history that these two teams have and considering that this game is extremely important for both teams coming off of losses, we are not going to see a, an open back and forth game. I, I fully expect this to be one of the best games of the night because it should be a playoff atmosphere. Two to one final, maybe three to one final. It's not going to be super ex, like exciting from a, a scoring perspective, but it should have that intensity. So when we look at a team that is objectively great on defense like the Pens and then a team that's actually trending in the right direction like the Isles, we're actually set up for a really low scoring game. Combined with the fact that the Pens lost Jake Gensel, their second best goal scorer behind Sidney Crosby, he's out for multiple weeks. So we have a team that's already bad on offense and now that's decreased even further with the player being out. The total is five and a half right now, even money on the under. It's a pretty low total, but does that intensity factor, is that what allows you to take the under despite the fact it's, it's sitting at five and a half right now? Yeah, like maybe if you want to buy it up and get the this flat six and just yeah. under six so you can get a push. That's fine if you're willing to lay that extra juice. I, I don't mind that in certain circumstances. I think we're getting to the point in the season where I'm willing to go to, oh, it's a it's a five, I'll push it to six, and I'll get the minus 145 juice or whatever it might be just yeah. because I, I'm, I'll play a little bit safer. Okay. So I, I think we're actually at a point in the season where we actually can really just trust teams to do things in a rational manner and focusing on teams that need to win, focusing on teams that need to be playing solid defense, that's where we should be um deriving the best approach if that makes sense like yesterday the, the sneakers and the ducks played like that's not a game you should be focusing in on too much okay so tom likes the under for the islanders and penguins under five and a half plus 100 right now you mentioned there was one other traditional market bet you liked as well which one was that that's gonna be the dallas stars money line at plus 126 uh they played yesterday at boston they played a great game they lost in the ninth round of the shootout the Rangers are riding now a seven game winning streak. And as I mentioned, they, you know, this big come from behind emotional win against the, the Islanders in the outdoor game on, on Sunday. This is just like a letdown spot for the Rangers. Also, I view hockey as much as I, the same way I do baseball. There's just so much variance where teams just don't win nine, 10 games in a row mm. very often. And as I mentioned, the stars are an awesome team, right? Where they're putting all the pieces together. They have incredible depth. Uh, they probably have the best forward group in the entire league. Their defense is getting healthy. Like I said, Jake Ottinger is back whether he plays tonight, today after yesterday is yet to be seen. But they're a super solid team, and I'm not sure we should be seeing Igor Shesterkin in net for the Rangers because he played the past few games. It should be Jonathan Quick, who's been good but not great for the Rangers this season. They also could be missing Ryan Lindgren with their top defenders. So we add all these things together, and it's like, hey, this is actually a, a toss-up game just because both these teams are really good. I'm just going to take the plus money with the team coming off a loss and banking on a little bit of variance. But you're a Rangers fan, Tom. So. Yeah, but the, the value lies. Value is value, <laughs> as you always say. Right? Value is value. Value is value. I'm proud of you. You know, not rooting for the for the laundry. Right. This is say, this know? is about we have two good teams, and if we are expecting eventually the Rangers to regress off this goal scoring rate, which has been unusually high on a seven game yeah. winning streak, that's going to regress. Combined with their defense has been okay as of late. Like they're giving up a ton of goals, and they have the scoring to come back and have these come from behind wins but that's not obviously a good like process wise thing way to be going about things when you know i said the stars they're an awesome team yeah okay so tom likes the stars plus 126 and this is a bet against fair team so hopefully that made makes a little bit more uh weighty as well what about player props anything is standing out to you there tonight yeah there's only two uh at least as of now too i'll have an article article up on FanDuel research going through a bit more but with the winnipeg jets uh, Kyle Connor to score a goal at plus 135. 
The Jets had, I'm going to say, a bit of a disappointing game yesterday. They were up. They lose to a team with the Flames that are objectively worse. Uh, Kyle Connor is a primary shooter for them. Oh, first forward line, first power play, always putting up goals. He was actually, I don't want to say on pace, but he was almost neck and neck with Matthews to start the season. He then had a knee injury at the very beginning of December, missed six weeks, eight weeks, whatever it was. But he's an elite goal scorer and high volume shooter hasn't scored in a few few games the wild had uh, no pun intended a wild game yesterday which would, they won 10 to 7 after scoring six goals in 5 minutes and 54 seconds i think it was to start the third period what? three players had a hat trick in that game which was the first time since 92 i believe they were down 5 to 3 coming into the third and they won that game 10 to 7 so an absolutely insane game from the, the wild and like i said the, the jets are a great defensive team but their offense has been slacking, and given the lack of defense from the Wild, not just yesterday, but overall, Connor really should be shooting at a high volume. And he's plus 145 right now for anytime goal uh, at FanDuel Sportsbook for the Wild and the Jets. 10 to 7 is nuts. Love yes. that. Uh, I am, in theory, a Wild fan, you know, but uh, clearly I'm not keeping that close tabs. Uh, Daytona's a higher priority. Yeah, Daytona was on yesterday. I'm not surprised you weren't keeping track with the Wild. Canucks yeah. game yesterday, especially in the year 2023, 2024. I'm not uh, keeping super close tabs in the right. wild. That that focus is dedicated more towards the wolves for me is my like tangential fandom. Okay. Any other player props you like besides the Connor goal? Yeah. One other would be on the Los Angeles Kings last game on the slate. The uh, Victor Arvidsson for a goal. The Kings have a slate high 3.87 implied goal total. As you can see that they are pretty juicy minus 245 home favorites. Victor Arvidsson, uh, this will be his fourth game of the season. He started the year on long-term IR. He missed a ton of games, obviously. This is his fourth game of the season. Uh, looking back at his career, he is traditionally a 20-30 to 30 goal scorer, very solid when he's with Nashville. Uh, High-volume shooter. Blue Jacks are terrible on defense. He's shot the puck well in his first few games. He does not have a goal in his first three games with five, three, and four shots on goal, which is – you're saying, oh, it's only three games. He's you know averaging three and a half or so shots on goal per game. That's actually where he should be, you know, looking back at his, his historical track record. So I like the fact that they're at home. I like the fact that we get a big number on a traditionally very strong goal score. And a slate high 3.87 implied goal total is something that we should be attacking every day. So even if he just was he hasn't scored in a few games, it wasn't his fourth game of the season, all these things, like we should be looking at him, Adrian Kempe, Trevor Moore. Some of these players are going to be scoring against the Blue Jackets tonight. Now, with Arvidsson, as you mentioned, coming out the injury, he's played three games since he returned. The shot volume has been good. Time on ice, uh, 15 minutes, 18 minutes, 16 minutes. Is that enough for you to feel pretty good about the volume, like no ramp-up concerns with him? Oh, absolutely not. It's a player that's going to be on the top six and seeing power play time. You know, whether I have to check the updated lines if they shifted things around. But 18 minutes, 16 minutes, that's where he should be. So that is absolutely on point, high volume. It's the Blue Jackets. I'm not worried about if it's... Elvis Merzlikins and net, whoever it is, it doesn't matter. They're terrible. I'll be taking a high volume shooter anytime going against the Blue Jackets or the Sharks, any of these teams. Okay. So Tom's two player props are Kyle Connor to score a goal for the Wild and Jets, plus 145. And then Victor Arvidsson to score. That is plus 185 as well. That is Tom Vecchio. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. Find his work as mentioned at FanDuel Research and check out the Daily ISO once that's back from the NBA All-Star break as well. Tom, have a fantastic day. I'm looking forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks for having me. All righty. Big thank you to Tom. As always, looking forward to getting him back on the show here again in the very near future. Going to go back through recommendations from last week here on the show in just one second. But first, get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit the FanDuel.com app and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. 
FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, one 888 Seven 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 over the ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, one eight hundred nine with it in Indiana, one eight hundred five two two forty seven hundred visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, one eight seven 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 zero stop in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, one eight hundred gambler.net in West Virginia, one eight hundred five two two forty seven hundred in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gambling helpline ma.org. Or call 800 327 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts, or call 1 877 Open Y or text Open Y in New York. Let's go back through recommendations here from last week on the show, beginning with me at Daytona. Recommended a couple of stuff, a couple of things on a Friday. Now, this is before the races were postponed uh, for the Xfinity Series and the Cup Series. So, because they're postponed more than 24 hours, these bets were refunded if you bet them at FanDuel. So keep that in mind uh, that they would have been voided if you had bet them then. The bets I recommended for transparency purpose were Martin Truex Jr., 23 to 1. Truex, okay race, got caught up in a wreck pretty late. Uh, didn't do a whole lot there, but still thought it was good at the time. And then in Xfinity Series, I had Daniel Suarez, 16 to 1, and Ryan Sieg, 50 to 1. Suarez got caught up in a very early crash. Sieg got caught up in one later. So 0 for 3 on those. In the Truck Series on Friday, and this, these actually did stand. This one is real. Uh, Tyler Ankrum, 22 to 1, was my lone recommendation for the Truck Series at Daytona. Ankrum had a pretty good truck, again, as always. Uh, ran up front for most of the night and just got caught up in a wreck. Not of his own doing once again. That's how things have always gone with Anchor at, at Pack Tracks. I can guarantee you I'll probably be back on him again this week in Atlanta. It's kind of how things go. So uh, Tyler Anchor, 22 to 1, did not win there. Uh, for the EPL, we had Austin Cass on to talk about EPL Match Week 25. Check out Austin on Twitter at Austin Cass. Find his work at FanDuel Research, where he is a senior editor. Austin had Phil Foden to score assist at plus 105 for Man City. Versus Chelsea, had to make sure that Foden was in the starting lineup before betting this one, and he was. So this one did stand. Foden, though, did not score or assist a 1-1 tie, but or a draw between Man City and Chelsea, so no win there. Other two bets for Austin were on Monday. That was the Everton money line at minus 140, and Everton over one half goals at minus 104. And the XG numbers actually said that Everton played pretty well in this game. Uh, they outscored Crystal Palace by a full goal in terms of XG, but it was a 1-1 draw, so... No win for either the one and a half over or the money line on Everton. We'll get Austin back on the show later on this week to talk EPL Match Week 26. Finally, we had Tom Vecchio on earlier on this week to talk about the NBA All-Star Game festivities. In the three-point contest, he had Donovan Mitchell plus 950 to win that one along with Mitchell over 19 and a half points in round one at minus 130. And that first bet did hit uh, because Mitchell scored 21 points in round one, but that was not enough to advance to the second round. But regardless, hey, that bet wins, so hopefully a bit of a hedge there uh, and a bit of a cushion, I guess I should say, with the plus 950 on Mitchell. Then Tom also had uh, Tyrese Halliburton, All-Star Game MVP at 16-1, to and Shea Gilgis, uh, or SGA, uh, All-Star Game MVP at 14-1. to Couldn't get by on either of those. I believe it was uh, Damian Lillard. Let's just check that quick because I actually forgot to check this. Yeah. Uh, Damian Lord MVP and winning the three point contest. So uh, couldn't quite get over Dame there with Halliburton and SGA, but uh, fun discussion regardless. And hopefully a good weekend. I know that the Twitter sentiment around the NBA All Star festivities is not great, but hopefully it was fun for you individually watching all those events. That's all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. As mentioned, Ryan Williams is with us tomorrow talking NBA futures coming out of the All-Star break. That'll be up tomorrow morning on the Covering the Spread podcast feed along with the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. If you got any questions for me, I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can check me out on threads at jim.sonis and find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across Tuesday. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down some NBA. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 